boy asked. From many places. No one can be from many places, the boy said. I'm a shepherd. I've been to many places, but I come from one place only. From a city near an ancient castle. That's where I was born. Well then, we could say that I was born in Salem. The boy didn't know where Salem was, but he didn't want to ask, fearing that he would appear ignorant. He looked at the people in the plaza for a while. They were coming and going, and all of them seemed to be very busy. So, what is Salem like? He asked, trying to get some sort of clue. It's like it always has been. No clue yet, but he knew that Salem wasn't in Andalusia. If it were, he would already have heard of it. And what do you do in Salem? He insisted. What do I do in Salem? Say strange things. The boy thought. Sometimes it's better to be with the sheep, who don't say anything, and better still to be alone with one's books. They tell the incredible stories at the time when you want to hear them, but when you're talking to people, they say some things that are so strange that you don't know. Mysterious force begins to convince them 
Virgin's daughter would be impressed when he told her about that. It's the force that appears to be negative, but actually shows you how to realize your destiny. It prepares your spirit and your will, because there's one great truth on this planet. Desire originated in the soul of the universe is your mission on earth. Even when all you want to do is travel or marry the daughter of a textile merchant, yes, or even search for treasure, the soul of world is nourished by people's happiness and also by unhappiness. Jealousy. To realize one's destiny is the person's only real obligation. All things are one, and when you want something, all the universe conspires to helping you to achieve it. They were both silent for a while, observing the plaza and the townspeople. Spoke first. Why do you tend a flock of sheep? Because I like to travel. The old man pointed to a baker standing in his shop window at one corner of the plaza. When he was a child, that man wanted to travel too. Decided first to buy his bakery and put some money aside. When he's a no man, he's going to spend a month in Africa. He never realized that people are capable at any time in their lives of doing what they dream of. He should have decided to become a shepherd. The boy said. Well, he thought about that. The old man. When you always appear on the scene, not always in this way, but I always appear in one form or another. Sometimes I appear in the form of a solution or a good idea, but other times, at a crucial moment, I make it easier for things to happen. There are other things I do too. Most of the time, people don't realize I've done them. The old man related that the week before he had been forced to appear before a miner and had taken the form of a stone. The miner had abandoned everything to go mining for emeralds. For five years, he had been working a certain river. Involved. He 
transformed himself into a stone that rolled up the miner's foot. The miner, in all the anger and frustration of his five fruitless years, picked up the stone and threw it aside. But he had thrown it with such force that it broke the stone it fell upon. And there, embedded in the broken stone, was the most beautiful. Should go back to being a shepherd. In two years, he had learned 
was from there that the Moors had come to occupy all of Spain. He could see almost the entire city from where he sat. Boy, explained. 
explained that it wasn't important, seeing that she was the most intelligent of the flock and produced the most wool. Where is the treasure? he asked. It's in Egypt, near the pyramids. The boy was starved. The old woman had said the same thing, but she hadn't charged him.
confessed that he had observed nothing. His only concern had been not to spill the oil that the wise man had entrusted to him. Then go back and observe the marvels of my world, said the wise man. You cannot trust a man if you don't know his house. Revealed, the boy picked up the spoon and returned to his exploration of the palace. This time, observing all of his works of art on the ceilings and the walls, he saw the gardens, the mountains all around him, the beauty of the flowers, and the taste with which everything had been selected. Upon returning to the wise man, he related in detail everything he had seen. But where are the drops of oil I entrusted to you? asked the wise man. Looking down at the spoon he held, the boy saw the oil was gone. Well, there's only one piece of advice I can give you, said the wisest of wise men. The secret of happiness is to see all the marvels in the world. Never to forget the drops of oil on the spoon. The shepherd said nothing. He had understood the story of the old king had told him. A shepherd may like to travel, but he should never forget about his sheep. The old man looked at the boy and, with his hands held together, made several strange gestures over the boy's head. Just a few hours, he 
village of Saint Santiago Matamoros on his white horse, his sword unsheathed, and fingers such as these, these kneeling to at his feet. The boy felt ill and terribly alone. The infidels had an evil look around him. Beside this, in the rush of his travels, he had forgotten a detail.
conspires in your favor. He took his money from his pouch and showed it to the young man. The owner of the bar came over and looked. As well, the two men exchanged some words in Arabic, and the bar owner seemed irritated. Let's get out of here, said the new arrival. He wants us to leave.
stranger in a strange land where he couldn't even speak the language he was no longer a shepherd and he had nothing not even the money to return and start everything over all this happened between sunrise and sunset the boy thought he was feeling sorry for himself and lamenting the fact that his life could ever would have changed so suddenly and so so ashamed that he wanted to cry he had never even wept in front of his own sheep but the market place was empty and he was far from home so he wept he wept because god was unfair and because his way the way god repaid those who believe in their dreams when i had my sheep i was happy i made those around me happy saw me coming and welcomed me, he thought. But now I'm sad and alone. I'm going to become bitter and distrustful of people because one person betrayed me. I'm going to hate those who have found their treasure because I never found mine. And I'm going to hold on to what little I have because I'm too insignificant to conquer the world. He opened his power Thank you.
stones could fall through me any time they wanted. He had learned that. There were certain things one shouldn't ask about, so as not to flee from one's own destiny. I promised that I would make my own decision, he said to himself. But the stone had told him that the old man was still with him, and that made him more confident. He looked around at the empty plaza again, feeling less desperate than before. It wasn't a strange place. It was a new one. After all, what he had always wanted was just that, to know new places. Even if he never got to the pyramids, he had already traveled farther than any shepherd he knew. Oh, if they only knew how different things are just two hours by sheep. From where they are, he thought. Although his new world at this moment was just an empty marketplace, he had already seen it when it was teeming with life, and he would never forget it. He remembered the sword. It hurt him a bit to think about it, but it, he had never seen anyone like it before.
once again he saw that in that strange land he was applying the same lessons he had learned with his sheep all things are one the old man had said crystal merchant awoke with the day and felt the same anxiety that fell every morning he had been in the same place for 30 years a shop at the top of a hilly street where few customers passed now it was too late to change anything and the only thing he had ever learned to do was to buy and sell crystal glassware there had been a time geologists, German soldiers who were always well healed. In those days, it had been wonderful to be selling crystal, and he had thought he would become rich and have beautiful women at his side as he grew older. But as time passed, Tangier had changed. The nearby city of Suta had grown faster than Tangier. Business has fallen off. Neighbors move away, and there remain only a few small shops on the hill. And no one was going to climb the hill just to browse through a few small shops. But the crystal merchant had no choice. He had lived thirty years of his life buying and selling crystal pieces, and now it was too late to do anything else. He spent the entire morning observing the infrequent comings and goings in the street. He had done this for years and knew the schedule of everyone who passed. But just before lunchtime, a boy stopped in front of the shop. He was dressed normally, but the practiced eyes of the crystal merchant would see that the boy had no money to spend. Nevertheless, the merchant decided to delay his lunch for a few minutes until the boy moved on. A card hanging in the doorway announced that several languages were spoken in the shop. The boy saw a man appear behind the counter. I can clean up those glasses by the window if you want, said the boy. The way they look now, nobody is going to to want to buy them. The man looked at him without responding. In exchange, you could give me something to eat. The man still had said nothing, and the boy sensed that he was going to have to make a decision. In his pouch, he had his jacket, he had suddenly wasn't going to need it in the desert. Taking this jacket out, began to clean the glasses. In half an hour, he had cleaned all the glasses in the window. And as he was doing so, two customers had entered the shop and bought some crystal. When he had completed the cleaning, he asked the man for something to eat. Let's go and have some lunch, said the crystal merchant. He put a sign on the door. A small cafe nearby. As they sat down at the only table in the place, the crystal merchant laughed. You didn't have to do any cleaning, he said. The Quran requires me to feed a hungry person. Well then, why did you let me do it? the boy asked. Because the crystal was dirty, and put I and you to cleanse our minds of negative thoughts. When they had eaten, the merchant turned to the boy and said, I'd like you to work in my shop. Two customers came today and while they were working, that's a good omen. People talk a lot about omens, thought the shepherd, but they really don't know what they are saying. Just as I hadn't realized that for so many years, I had been speaking the language.
language with our words to my sheep. Do you want to go to work for me? The merchant asked. I can work for the rest of today, the boy answered. I work all night until dawn. I'll clean every piece of crystal in your shop. In return, I need money to get to Egypt tomorrow. The merchant laughed. Even if you clean my crystal for an entire year, even if you earned a good commission selling every piece, you would still have to borrow money to get to Egypt. There are thousands of kilometers of desert between here and there. There was a moment of silence, so profound that it seemed the city was asleep. No sound from the bazaars, no arguments among the merchants, no men climbing to the towers to chant, no hope.